Alright, so I did have one request to do this video, and it's a pretty neat little dragonfly nymph. Uh, I haven't found one that I was uh, really excited about. There was um, one that I liked, but involved like a woven body and a lot of other stuff, and it's kind of a pain to tie after a while. It's hard to build up that bulk that I wanted in a fly. And, um, None of the other dragonfly nymphs that I found were really all that appealing. You know, I was um, fishing a lot of carry specials and uh, even like big prince nymphs to try to imitate, but um, thought that was going to do the job. But um, recently went fishing and um, fishing was really good, so I decided to take a couple home with me. Not normally what I like to do, but took a few home and um, when I was cleaning them, I, you know, always cut open the stomach, see what they're eating, see what I can play around with, and kind of get an idea of what the fish are liking to eat, and, um, on these fish, I'd even, uh, I got a stomach pump, and I'd been sucking their stomachs, but, you know, I was getting a lot of scuds and, uh, some midges and stuff like that, but, um, even after sucking their stomachs, it missed these guys here, it was, Pretty big dragonfly nymph. I don't even know if that would fit down the tube of the um, the stomach pump, but um, as you can see, they're pretty, pretty big, fi uh, pretty big bugs, and um, that's why I've got this. Uh, this is a size four hook here, and this is a normally like a dry fly hook, big dry fly hook, uh, something that you'd use for a you know stimulator or big stone fly, even hopper stuff like that, but. Um, on this pattern, you can definitely get away with big streamer hooks, but I really like the shape of this. That uh, gives the your nymphs and stuff a little bit more of a curve, a little bit more natural looking. So uh, that's what I'm going to go with. So first things first, what we're going to do here is um, take some O3 OLED wire, and this is more not for weight. Uh, this is it definitely add quite a bit of weight, a uh, weight, and definitely help your pattern sink here and get down deep, but. Um, this is more for building up bulk, so we don't really want this near the front. We want it kind of just in this space here, back to you know, where the body is going to be. And just about, you know, 10 to, you know, a dozen wraps or so. And you want that just about in line with the hook point. You can always cheat up a little bit, give yourself a little bit more room, but because um, we're going to be tying in little short little tail here so I give ourselves a little bit of room and then uh, I just got some um, uni 6 hot and tan and this is just to kind of match the color of this guy he's sort of a light olive to a, a tan so um, one that we're going to be going with here and you know I was uh, fishing those carry specials and stuff and I thought that I was going to be doing the job but you know, cause I, I had never seen a dragonfly nymph in person before. You know, just looking at pictures online and stuff, you always get, you know, a thousand different different kinds of bugs and different species, different small little variations and stuff. But uh, um, you never really know what's going to be exactly in your water until you, you know, you find them. And the best place to find them is in a fish stomach because you know that that's one that they've been keying in on. That's one that they've been eating. So... Um, got that in my hand and realized, you know, these things are big and fat and, you know, they've got tons of bulk to them and, you know, the flies that I was fishing trying to imitate them, they're just not going to cut it. So, I uh, kind of went back to the drawing board and um, tried out a few different patterns that, you know, I was kind of interested in. And, um, but there you see, too complicated to tie or just, you know, took too much time and, you know, not really something that I was into. Um, you know, certain flies, you know, we tie flies to catch fish, but really what we want to do is tie a fly that catches fish and catches our attention. And, you know, you got to find that right balance because, you know, having a fly that doesn't look good in your box, you're never going to fish it because it doesn't catch your eye right away. It just kind of sits in the back of the box and, you know, rots away. So, um, that's what I'm kind of hoping to 
accomplish here is make something that looks good to us and it's close enough to the natural to really catch fish. So I just got some um, medium bead chain eyes here and uh, you can definitely definitely step up in size you can go with the large or you know, even bigger if you can find bigger but um, you know if you want to overemphasize the the eyes make them a little bit more exaggerated a little bit bigger and a little bit more obvious but uh, these medium is this medium size is pretty close to um, the size on the natural so that's what I'm going to go with so I'm just going to Figure eight that in and give it a few cross wraps and all that and get it down nice and tight. And before I get too far along with this, I always like to put in a little bit of super glue just to help keep it from spinning a little bit more. See, I've got this right up close to the eye. Um, you know, we want a little bit of room to tie off and a little bit of room to put in some dubbing in front but when you look at the natural here um, they've got pretty short stubby face kind of hard to get them to line up right but um, yeah their eyes are right on the end of their head so that's where we want it to be and, um, another cool thing if you kind of off on a different tangent see that little triangle shape down there um, if you ever get a chance go look up a uh, I'm sure there's videos of it on YouTube and stuff but uh, dragonflies eating they've got this really neat uh, detached mandible that yeah they can kind of shoot out and catch their prey there's a lot of them they eat uh, midges and you know other small small insects in the water but really neat to watch them eat and see that thing in action because it's, it's pretty neat um, anyways, back on topic here, I just got some, uh, cross cut, and cross cut's nice if you don't have cross cut, the normal will work just fine, but, um, this is in golden variant, and I'm just gonna take the, uh, zonker strip here, take off about half an inch, quarter inch or so of, of fibers, and just pull those right off, they should come right off for you, um, you can definitely cut them clean, but, no need to and this this saves a little bit of time so it's gonna have a nice short little tail and again if you look at the real real deal um, they don't have a tail there's just these little tiny almost pincer looking things at the back of them but um, this is just to add some extra movement and because um, you know we won't get very much movement at all from the body that we're gonna put on this thing so any little extra bit that we can put on is a good thing. So, um, just going to tie in this tail just towards the, the back of the bend of the hook. You can go a little bit further if you want. And I'm just going to stop my thread right there at the barb. And that's going to be far down plenty, far enough. It's going to come back up, cover up all those butts. Again, we want to build in a lot of bulk under this body. So, the more wraps, the better. You can't do too many on this flight. It's going to build up a nice bit of bulk. Just cover everything up, make sure we're nice and clean. And then, next material here is it's going to be some brown uh, brassy wire. It's uh, kind of sort of the brown copper. It's colored brown, but it's, it's definitely just like a dark copper. It uses a lot on a uh, like the brassies and like the sunburnt brassies, stuff like that, if you ever heard of those. Um, really nice color, actually. Nice and dark and, you know, gives you a good segmentation on, on flies, especially this one you'll see in a minute. But you still have a little bit of that copper flash to it, so that's nice. And you want to have yourself a nice long piece. Um, you're going to chew up a lot more of this than you think you will, so definitely make sure that's nice and long. Just going to tie that in just right down the side. said as many as wraps as you want I mean it's, you can't build up too much bulk on this fly 
and do that. And then um, it's got a latex strip here. And actually, if I can find the package, um, it's actually bought just like this. And this stuff is really nice, nice material. A um, whole lot better than using rubber bands and stuff. That being said, you can use rubber bands if you can't find this stuff. And, um, works just fine, but this stuff is a whole lot more nice, nicer to work with and a um, whole lot more forgiving. And this is a, just some nymph skin from Hairline. And uh, this is a natural latex. Uh, it doesn't really matter the color. We're going to color it up later, so um, not a big deal. Just gonna take this and then uh, take some scissors here. Just kind of cut it to a kind of a point. We just want a little bit of a taper down. And this stuff will stretch quite a bit, so don't be afraid to make that angle pretty, pretty steep there. Cover that all up. And sticking with the theme of wanting to build up bulk, um, here I've got some big fly, big fly thread, and if you can get this in tan, it'll be a whole lot easier on you, but uh, my shop only carries black, so that's what I'm stuck with. Um, so what we're going to do here is just build up a bit of a tapered body, and um, if you look at this guy here, um, it'd be easier if I could get them to go from the top, but they've got really fat section right back in here, kind of in here. It tapers up pretty quick to fat section there, and then tapers back down to pretty, actually pretty skinny up here. So that's going to be kind of the shape that I want to accomplish. It's going to be a little bit harder with this thread, but um, you just have to wax it up pretty well and might end up a little bit more with a football shape, but I'm going to try to go with uh, sort of an almond shape if you can think of it that way. So I'll fast forward through this part. It's going to take a while, so. sit through this next part because I'm going to blob a little bit more but um you can see that builds up a fairly quick body um I tried some other methods I tried using dubbing and stuff like that and you get you do get a really neat effect of a underbody under there if you use the right kind of colors of dubbing and stuff like that I mean if you do it that way you might not even have to color up the body but um this way is a whole lot quicker a whole lot more durable you know sitting here yanking and, and tugging on flies and jabbing bodkins in them and stuff like that trying to get them to break and um, so far this way has been most durable out of all of them but um, a whole lot quicker to tie to imagine trying to build up all that bulk with just some dubbing it's kind of gets to be a pain after a while I mean with the the dubbing and stuff underneath too it's you get really neat effect with it but it's also um, really spongy so you know whatever materials you do put on top of it when that gets squished down a little bit you know either by a fish or somehow by the cast or anything like that it's you're going to push down on that and it's the inside is going to lose diameter so all these materials that we're going to wrap on the outside are you know pretty much just unravel and fall off because you know there's nothing for them to you know be tight around anymore because it's all you know back down so I'm just gonna cover up this body with tan smooth it all out and make it nice and pretty a um, whole lot easier if you've got that tan big fly thread yeah, I'm just trying to cover up most of these little black spots there's 
and that's probably good right there I'm gonna cover it up anyway so I don't want to get too too picky with that but um with a tan I mean, you wouldn't even notice so I just gotta first I'm gonna wrap up this latex and one important thing for this is super glue if you don't have super glue yet stop right now and go out and go buy a dupe this brush on stuff is ten times better than anything I could have hoped for I mean really handy to have I mean trying to just squirt on little drops and spread it on with a bodkin it gets to be a pain after a while so the brush really helps so now I'm just gonna take advantage of this rotary feature here and if this wants to lay the right way I don't think it will want to so I'm gonna go back go up this way here we go just wrapping this around trying to keep it exactly where I want it just slightly over wrapping each other without letting this super glue dry out too quick you know we want to go slow and be patient and get the body that we want but we don't want that super glue to dry out too much so I'm just gonna dab on a little bit more and keep working with this you will notice that if it does dry on the latex while you're working with it it will kind of crack the latex a little bit but um, that's no big deal uh, as long as you get it down on the body on the underbody excuse me uh, before it breaks on you and before all the super glue is dry um, because you know if you pull too tight anything like that it'll you know, obviously snap on you and, and break and that's no good but um, it's gonna wrap up here Almost to the end, just a little bit more super glue underneath. Uh, like I was saying, you may lose a little bit of strength on the latex, but it's not a big deal with all the super glue on it. And um, with the wire wrap that we're going to do next. So, just right behind those eyes, just going to tie everything off. And you want to give yourself good bit of room up here just because we're going to tie in a collar of a rabbit fur up here so give yourself a little bit of room there you see that that body's really nice shape nice uh, segmentation to it and everything and, but not exactly the best for movement so uh, that's why we got to build in as much as we can like with this little tail back here and um, with everything else that we're going to be putting on this fly. So next we are just going to wrap this wire up. Following all that segmentation that we built in with the sorry I'll try to get my hands out of the way here. All that segmentation that we built in with the nymph scan. I look a little bit cattywampus at first. I mean, it's really hard to get that nymph skin to sit just right and get even spacing and even segmentation and everything. So um, this wire will look kind of odd, kind of spaced out all over the place. But once we get some color on here, it'll be just fine. Now notice I'm using this rotary function and I'm keeping really good tension on here because I wanted to bite down into that latex and give us some added strength and added durability here and this also adds just a little bit of um, shine like I was talking like this color here is really nice because it gives you nice dark segmentation but it still gives you a little bit of flash so we're gonna keep wrapping this up all the way to the end
right, so now that we've got that all wrapped up and nice and pretty, what you do is start coloring this guy up. So, um, obviously color it to the naturals that you want, but this one here is going to be to kind of match this tan, olive color here. So, what I'm going to start out with is I'm going to actually kind of go in reverse here and start out with our darkest color. This is redwood. Um, pretty decent color. It blends in well with all the other ones, so I'm just going to start out with that one, making some dark marks across the back. And then some lines on the side here. These will look really odd and out of place until you get all the, all the colors in. So, don't mind them quite yet. The next color that I'm going to start with is I'm going to go with the sepia color and color in the back. And then the olive. Same thing, kind of color in the back. Now that's pretty dark up there, so what we're going to do is take this beige, and this beige is really good color to match that natural that I was showing you. And this will start to lighten everything up, and just take it on down all the way around the body. it up a little bit and then I take this blender pen see so just the blender there's no color to it the tips a little bit green because it's been in this olive so much but uh, just take the blender pen and that'll lighten it up just a little bit more kind of make that uh, olive and the sepia mixed together So you got a nicely colored body there. And then what I'm going to do next is just take a, a permanent marker here. And right where we put in those dark, dark, uh, um, what color was it? Red, redwood colors. I'm just going to go in with the marker and just kind of dab in there. give it a little bit more contrast. This is way more in-depth than you really need to go, honestly. Um, I'm sure the fish won't mind it. You can even leave it that natural latex color. I mean, I'm sure the fish wouldn't mind. Just color up this by the sides a little bit and just give it a little bit of a quick, neat look to it. Nothing too fancy. And then clean up this spot here. I'm just going to make a nice little dubbing loop. And this is why I chose the, uh, the cross-cut zonkers. It's a whole lot easier to, to do this with the cross-cut than with the, the normal straight cut. So I'm just going to get right around two inches of this stuff. And this is the same exact the gold gradient color. I'm just going to get Got a little two inch strip here and you can see I'm using the same side that I use for the tail so don't want to waste too much of that. Actually I'll just trim that off so we don't get any extra short fibers. I'm just going to take that and then actually here let me stick my dub and spinner in here first. Make it a little bit easier on myself. And then take that. You can always wax the thread a little bit. That helps. Wax the thread both sides. And then take this, slide it right up in there. The closer you can get to the actual body, the better. 
Now one thing that I've found when you're cutting this this uh, leather part off, if you use some serrated scissors, it works a whole lot easier. Because if you use the uh, straight, like I normally like to use my um, doctor's like razor scissors, um, it sort of pushes the fibers around rather than just cutting them. So if you use these serrated ones, it grabs onto each fiber and really makes a nice easy cut. Cut that all the way out. And I mean, you can't mess around with cutting off the, the fibers and then putting them in and cutting off the fibers and putting them in, but I found this way um, works much better and it's a whole lot quicker. So you're just going to spin that up. Nice and tight. Then I'm going to get my some hackle pliers here. This is a standard El Cheapo one. So one you can get anywhere. These ones work great for this. Just gonna hook onto there. Cut off all the extra thread on my dubbing spinner. Take this, put it away. I'm just gonna wrap this around, pulling back the fibers each time we go. And don't worry, this collar here will look super bulky and will su look super out of place but once you get it wet and once you get it in the water it will look great so not to worry right now and just wrap that all the way on right up behind the, these uh, bead chain eyes and you can get a little bit of water and slick that back but uh, just to show you that the the inversion looks like I won't mess around with that. So just gonna tie this down. And I like to tie it down right where the collar ends and then also kind of come across and tie it right in front of the eye. So that way what I can do here is it's a little bit easier to be sure that we're doubling this over and tying it down. Because uh if we try to double it over just in this little space right in front of the hackle collar, I mean, there's a chance you might not actually double it over and get it all in. I don't know. It's just one of those things that I like to do and it's become a habit by now, so I won't try to explain myself too much. And we're just going to get in there, get all that leftover thread, and snip that out. Get it. There we go. Then lastly, there's tons of different dubbings that you could use up here. Um, I've used uh, some ice dub on some other patterns, and that works great. But um, I've just got some life cycle dubbing. This is in the uh, ginger color. It's going to take a decent little clump, and we want to be fairly sparse on this on the thread. Just build up a good, long, skinny noodle. Set the rest to the side. Make sure we don't capture too many of these rabbit fibers here. I'm just gonna go ahead and figure eight those eyes a couple times. Come back here, build up the back of the head. And you know there's tons of different things that you can do with this pattern. Um, before I was taking like a soft hackle feather and putting this over the top and you know kind of making those uh wing buds or the uh, um, kind of thorax cover if you will over the back of them but um it just it wasn't very durable I mean they were even falling off in the in the fly box so you know I don't really like to put too many feathers on my flies that are just tied in by one little you know skinny stem because that just doesn't seem durable to me and I mean obviously it's not a Pretty tough on flies. I like to cast into you know some thick cover and around branches and all that stuff. So the more durable I can make them and smack them into rocks and trees and stuff and have them to come up and still be all in one piece the better. So um, 
Just gonna tag the head with some super glue. Just all the way around, make sure you get it nice and durable. And there we are. Nice simple dragonfly nymph. As you can see, it's a little bit of a longer tie, but um, definitely worth the time to have some good realistic imitations in your box rather than, you know, like I was doing fish and carry specials and stuff like that. They work great and they have their time and place, but if you really want to imitate a dragonfly nymph, you got to go with the dragonfly nymph. So, um, hope you enjoyed that and if you catch any fish on it or have any other cool variations of it that you want to show me, I'd be glad to see them.